So, so Chris, uh, there's a lot of great conversations this morning and, and touching on a lot of themes. Um, and, and so this is going to be a switch away from Nevada for, for, the, for the first time. Um, and I understand you, you have an announcement, um, but you know, just for context, um, uh, you know, Bentonville ha you know, has been the headquarters for, for Walmart. Most, most of its uh, sort of employees uh, in, in, in obviously high-end operations. And then, of course, it's a no-brainer, right? Then you move, you move to Bangalore and you've got, you've got Silicon Valley, obviously the Walmart labs there. So these are the traditional tech hubs. Um, and then, I think just last week you announced Austin. And That's today right. you're going to be talking for the first time about about Dallas. Dallas, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, right. so tell tell us a little bit about yeah. Dallas, what you're doing there, the the commitment, uh, and why why Dallas and why Austin. Absolutely. Well, Matt, first of all, thank you very much um, for having us over, and uh, love what you and VentureBeat is doing to drive this and uh, be out front there helping us. Uh, bring that talent and development in those states. Uh, the reason why we looked specifically around uh, Texas locations is, uh, you know, we will compete uh, with technology as always, but it is really your associates or your people that drive the difference. So if you look at uh, those locations, we probably have in Texas over 200,000 associates that work there already yeah. in our stores, clubs, DCs, and in that Dallas-Fort Worth area, probably just over 30,000. So if you look at the culture and the associates and the people that work there, we're a well-known brand. Uh, you have existing talent in those markets that are exactly in the same skill sets and experiences that we need. And then there's some really high level tier one schools like UT Austin, UT Dallas, SMU, Baylor, so forth, that is a great talent pipeline for those skills. So having said that, I think from a cultural perspective, it fits very well with you know, our basic beliefs and the founding culture of Walmart. And it represents the diversity of the people, the customers that shop our physical and digital channels. Mm. So it was a really perfect fit for us. Um, we were so proud to launch the Austin site. Um, it's not your typical Walmart office location. This is truly, it is an exciting, fast-paced, high-energy startup within a really large, complex, multinational retailer. Yeah. Is it carrying and the lab's the, name, or is this Walmart proper? This is Walmart Technology, yep. and uh, I personally am part of the Global Business Services Organization, mm. and you know that as the engine that drives uh, the services around all of your financials, people systems, real estate, and so forth. So, because we believe that you drive um, uh, with a maniacal focus around the customer externally in our dot-com sites that you see out of Sunnyvale and San Bruno and Jed.com on the East Coast. But you cannot just drive digital to the customer externally that shops your physical and digital channels. You have to look at the associates that serve those customers because as the physical and the digital comes together, we have to bring a seamless consumer grade digital experience to those associates as well. And that's where we're capturing the opportunities that um, we drive out of those two Austin and Dallas locations as well. Right. So, so, and so those are the two, two new regions they're using specifically to attract new tech right. talent. And my understanding is you've committed to, I mean, these, these are modest commitments so far, but, but about 45 in, e in, each, in each place, right? Can you, uh, can, can you give us a sense of uh, I mean, I've heard it's, it's, it's data science, machine learning, right. uh, IoT. Can you give a sense, sense of the projects that they're going to be working on specifically? Yes, absolutely. <coughs> so uh, we are looking at uh, solving really large, complex business problems mm -hmm. in that space. And luckily, we have the availability of some technologies that really enable that today. And it is, it is exactly what you said. So in the area of IoT or Internet of Things, mm -hmm. Um, there's a large opportunity for us. The use cases that we drive there would be in our stores uh, through a real estate lens, think facilities maintenance. This is not really cutting new yeah. groundbreaking. It, it is old IoT industrial knowledge that does telemetry data for things like refrigeration, HVAC, LED, and creates the digital twin of a store so that you can drive complex modeling mm. uh, for energy models, right? Mm. 
but there's a close adjacency there with your online business. As IoT expands, you'll now have um, IoT devices in homes, uh, wearables from customers, and there's wonderful new business uh, models and products that will emerge out of these centers mm -hmm. uh, to capture opportunities to make it easier for busy families to shop our channels. Mm -hmm. That's IoT. If you move on to uh, blockchain, blockchain, uh, don't think cryptocurrency in the context of this. Yeah. This is just um, using the technology to, uh, uh, the use case is farm to fork um, for food safety, uh, traceability on expiration dates or any uh, foodborne illnesses on recalls. And we use that technology because we want to be the most trusted retailer. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that families know the produce they put on their tables for their families. We know where it comes from mm -hmm. and the freshness of it. That's blockchain. Then, uh, you know, I almost hate using the words of AI and ML because yeah. uh, we all say it. But it's, it's really the opportunity. Walmart has a tremendous amount of data. And what we have to do is we have to protect our own IP in the sense where we want to bring that specifically inside. That's why these centers are, we are cherry picking the brightest uh, talent that we can find and seeding it there really small because this is driving higher end um, ML and AI um, for models, uh, you know, generic uh, uh, algorithms that we use for capital investment where we do new store placements is a good example. Mm -hmm. um, NLP or natural langu language processing where we uh, look at documentation for anything like you can Im you imagine the amount of legal or commercial infrastructure we have in place with vendors and suppliers. The use case there is something like post-payment audit reviews. Uh, there's also a lot of legal documents mm. thoughts that you can use NLP in order to drive just <coughs> tremendous discipline into your financial processes. Mm. And um, at our scale, uh, that is really the, the fuel we create in the services business that drives the innovation dollars on the customer side. So mm -hmm. that is our, what I like to call our productivity loop with those centers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and I think another thing on the list that you may not have mentioned just now is, is computer, computer vision, right? So using some of the AI Absolutely. to spot empty aisles, spills on aisles, right. and so on. It's important for, for Walmart. Right. It's interesting because you just you, essentially you just went through the buzz buzzword list of uh, all the top technologies <laughs> in Silicon Valley that you know VentureBeat looks at right, right. Uh, blockchain AI data science uh, and and so on and, and and I find it interesting that you are actually taking those jobs and actually having them planted in the regions not Silicon Valley the coast and actually using that to attract talent from from the regions right. I, and I think there I think there's a lot of conversation now about those jobs. Uh, maybe in bigger numbers that are being wiped out by, uh, by AI, and there's a lot of fear in, in the national conversation. So, you, so, so just curious in terms of your, your purview, Chris, um, what do regions need to do? Uh, what, 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 what do people need to do to reskill, upskill, uh, given your purview and potential for, for, for significant employment in these areas? Absolutely. We are making huge yeah. investments in the, you had it on your slide, the three pillars, and one was training and investing in, in reskilling associates. Uh, what we have to understand in the context of this, uh, it is going to create more opportunities on activities and tasks and individuals doing work that we don't even know today. Um, it is going to drive to a higher end um, decision making when I see those buzzwords, to me it just means really having the right information at, in the right format at the right time for humans to make better decisions mm. across the entire spectrum of our retail business. And that's where the opportunity lies. We will make sure that we drive um, you know, complexity and waste out of that system so that we can actually uh, staff the new business models that are going to develop in retail, and those are all about, you know, personalization. Mm. Um, we, we have a lot of focus on that. And then on demand, mm. uh, you know, busy families need it right now, and it's not just more, uh, any longer about, you know, assortment and price and quality. Mm. It is all that plus the experience portion of that transaction. Mm. 
and uh, that's where we believe these technologies can all play a significant part in that. And in, in the communities that we work, it is amazing the, the support and the energy. Uh, we heard the governor this morning, and uh, Ira mentioned as well the, the VC business. But in those communities of Austin, there's a tremendous amount of small startup companies. And it's all focused around some of these new technologies. And if you enter into the community, the Chamber of Commerce and the mayor and the local uh, leadership there, there's a tremendous le level of high energy and support mm. uh, when you enter those markets. And then uh, from the technical community, uh, whether it's tech stars or the meetups that we engage in or running hackathons, it's almost like those centers it, it becomes a meeting place. Mm. And you're not just a Walmart moving into this. You really become a, a, a great part of the community and you have to contribute uh, you know, to all of the, the members of that community. Mm. That's what makes it really exciting and rewarding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. It's, it's, uh, you mentioned the, the, the local community. I, we, we, haven't, we haven't talked a lot about that, but it's been a conversation uh, mm. on, on the stage conversations before us in terms of the public-private partnerships and we didn't prep about about this Chris in terms of you know the, the, that that fear that a good part of the nation has about, about job loss because of AI um, but when you think of some of the, the partnerships you'd be looking for community help um, uh, you're just just wondering do you see that advancing as it should are you an optimist that job creation can happen you're creating jobs maybe on a small scale now mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but there really is a fear of mass unemployment, uh, and I'm just wondering to what extent you're, and again, in, in, uh, commensurate to your role, you know, I'm not talking with the CEO mm -hmm. here, but um, you, you are on the ground looking at this job creation. Right. Can, can you talk a little bit about that, right? That, that, that whether you're an optimist, and what is it, uh, if you're not, what is it that the community needs to do specifically? Right. In the role that I have, um, to your point, Matt, I look at it through the lens that I see. And uh, in the space that I serve, which is global business services, I'm very optimistic about it. Hmm. Uh, just because we have such a vast amount of data that we haven't truly democratized or captured the value out of it to turn it into new product. So through the lens I look at and the organizations that I'm responsible for, there will be new products that will evolve in the next few months mm -hmm. and the next couple of years that's going to drive a business model mm -hmm. that will need a lot more talent. I'm very optimistic about it than what I have at the moment. Um, and that's the reason for my optimism. And I'll be uh, very fearful to venture into the world where uh, people are a lot more smart than I am, talk about when singularity is going to happen, yeah. and, you know, yeah. uh, good or bad AI, uh, I can't go there. Okay, uh, great. I think we have somebody from the S Singularity Institute here. Um, yeah. Just met him yesterday. Um, I do, I do want to take, take uh, some questions. Chris, Chris was, was welcoming questions. Uh, please, please raise your hand. I don't know if we have a mic we can run, but it's a small enough room where if you shout it out, we can hear you, I can repeat it. Any, any questions for, for Chris? Uh, yeah, there's a gentleman right back there. Absolutely. Can you repeat the question? I will repeat the question. Uh, the question was, uh, understand the community in Austin and why we're there for the reasons I explained, but also, in my opinion, what I see as potential other areas or cities uh, that could lend itself to uh, having a presence in. And um, I think for me it goes around um, the culture, um, the people of that community that also reflects some of the founding uh, values of, of Walmart, uh, a lot of people in communities that don't want to move out either to the West Coast or the East Coast because they have family there, 
they like the style, lifestyle. Um, the cost of living um, is important. And then also the quality of life, as we said. And then the presence of um, uh, good schools or universities that have a talent pipeline into those. So um, uh, I think you know uh, when we look at those areas, it is also where we have a, a, a great presence from a brand perspective. <laughs> Uh, because that makes it a lot easier and people trust the brand and if they can continue to live where they were born, raised and have families and afford to live there and have a great job, work on really complex problems, um, be engaged and directly connected to what the company uh, or the enterprise strategy is. I think that that's the formula that, that we look at for where we place our business in the context of this conference. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Your team mentioned that one, one of the factors very specifically was cost of living, and right. that uh, the Dallas and Austin were roughly 7%. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate these numbers were, but, but um, the ones that were thrown out, they're 7% more expensive than headquarters, right. Bentonville, but uh, the, the Bay Area was 80% more, more, uh, more expensive. So, so uh, what is it, you know, 73% 70, yeah. uh, cost of living differential, yeah. which is very, percentage points, but very, very significant which suggests that a good part of the nation right. is, is in the running for this sort of investment. Right? Um, any, any other questions from, from the audience? There's, <coughs> there's a gentleman in the back. Uh, there's a woman right here. Uh, yep. Uh, we're talking about content for research and innovation at the University of Arizona. Okay. So this is a good time to address the challenge that we face. You have Microphone. Now it's on. Uh, is it? So, uh, Myrtle Gotham from the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, thank you for, for being here and thank you for your comments. But here's the, here's the challenge. You have the Walmarts and you have the old Xerox. Brilliant companies, huge companies, led by uh, successful people who know how to run big companies. At some point in their lives, they were entrepreneurs, they were disruptors. Xerox moved to California the Xerox Park, it didn't do what it should have. So coming into a community, having large enterprises with great leaders in those companies, compared to uh, the breadware over here, a brilliant group of people, you know? They're young, they're disruptors, they're making a difference. There's a difference in the skill sets. There's a difference in the mindset. There's a difference in the capital engaged and involved in those things. Can you address that dichotomy where place like this needs a disruption, and we also have the uh, Teslas, and, and then of course Switch is a disruptor in, in, in partnership with the university. Uh, could you address that, that, that challenge that cities like this are facing? I don't think we're facing a challenge. I think we've done a pretty good, pretty good job in the mm -hmm. past four or five years, but uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way I can answer that question is um, the people that live in these communities uh, they have the same aspirational values that entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley or in Boston may have. I don't personally have experienced any difference. There's a high degree of um, uh, entrepreneurial spirit in those, and Walmart, as a more traditional 55-year-old company, uh, it is part of our DNA to continuously innovate. Um, back in the days way before I was the, the first company to adopt UPC codes and innovate in ways that uh, gave us an advantage. Uh, our, founder, our, our founder, Mr. Sam Walton, said, you know, you have to change. Mm. Change is consistent. And we are also blessed in the space of retail with really good competition uh, that keeps us um, on the edge. And um, we believe complacency will kill. So out of the company view, um, having the aspiration to continuously innovate and continuously change um, to find better ways to serve our customers combined with the entrepreneurial spirit of young companies that are starting up in these communities. It is a, a fantastic match. And then the third component of that is really um, to the question, uh, for, for example, in Dallas, we work very closely with uh, UT Dallas where we actually are leasing a, a pretty large space on campus. That's not part of our, our Dallas center. Mm -hmm. That is just a presence on campus where we are employing PhD students yeah. 
that are working on uh, very specific projects to become a feeder into that program as we develop it. And um, that, that was a really good question because it does take more than just one person. Great, can we, just, can we, can we take one, one brief question? I, we're, unfortunately, we're out of time. From, from the lady who is, who is next. I'm sorry, we're just out of time. What was your question? Maybe we can wrap it up. <laughs> Good, good question, so can we take this now? That, yeah, actually that's very, almost <laughs> identical to my question, which is Amazon, when Amazon went public, the very first thing they did with the proceeds of their public offering was acquire Walmart's entire distribution network. And everybody said, what's well, happening? So Amazon did that to own retail, and now Amazon has moved into banking, they've moved in, they own the cloud, they have moved into television, and I'm curious, if Walmart's innov technology innovations are about just increasing the retail aspect of Walmart services, or if Walmart is looking to diversify into a variety of other technologies as well. We, unfortunately, oh, we don't have much yeah. maybe one minute. No, that's fine. <laughs> just really to quickly answer that, as long as uh, the services we provide, whether it's for the unbanked or any other product, as long as it brings a benefit to our customers, we will use whatever technology is available to bring those products to the customers. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank Chris, you, man. Chris, thank you very much for joining thank us. You. Um, so so that, that brings us to our next session, where we, we really decidedly go to the communities. Um, and we have a, a, a set of lightning presentations from six regions, I believe.